people are joining uh, now. Some of you were able to make it to the convening and some of you uh, were not able to, and that's totally fine, but it was really great. It was a lot of fun. And I, I wanna sort of open it up to the other teachers who came, but what would you, what would you say, Vic? It, it's sort of a, a gathering of teachers, but then also a lot of uh, practitioners uh, that run after school programs, some people that do um, competitions like the we've talked about before and met with some of them the invention convention christina lawler king who was who was uh you know one of our guests um i just want to get it started because i know that one of our guests here is um has has three little ones and so we don't yeah. want to keep her so i know i'm going to introduce <laughs> these ladies now and we'll talk for maybe well they'll talk i'm going to be quiet for 20 minutes, so surprise, yes, guests of honor. But um, first of all, uh, our two guests, we have Dr. Gloria Banuelos here. She also goes by Dr. Gloria. And uh, I find that, thank you for that, by the way, uh, Gloria. <laughs> so who works for Qualcomm and who's done the amazing things in the world of innovation and invention, uh, especially their founder, but everyone who works for them, it's a massive company if you, uh, Yes, yeah, so she'll talk about that, but very much more so talk about the uh, uh, Inventors uh, Academy. Patent Academy. Yep. Oh boy, I'm really messing it up. Tip up. No, you're good. Uh, Tip you could just say Tip mm -hmm. You knew I needed your help. Okay, so we're so excited. And Gloria was one of the speakers at the convening in Alexandria, and hopefully she will be next year. And so hopefully, if you didn't make it this year, you'll come next year and you get to hear her speak in real life. One of our fellows from last year, Latoya Washington, science teacher, high school in Houston, Texas, who just won her school district of the year, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, and yes, yeah, well, it's amazing because Houston schools are huge. And so yeah. it's a massive honor. And I feel like, okay, um, I think we have another little quick guest. Come here quickly, say hi. Just say hi, <laughs> you have to go. Okay. <clears throat> you say hi, everybody. <laughs> Can you say hi, inventors? Hi, the doctor. Oh, this is Ariel, who sometimes sneaks in, and sometimes she just is so cute. I have to put her on because yeah, she's adorable. Mommy. There's mommy. You notice mommy? Yeah. That's right. She she insisted. She wants. She demanded to come in. So I, I couldn't. Oh. Okay, say bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. You're very smart. Bye. Bye. It's so cute. Bye. <laughs> See, you later. See you later. Okay, that was so Latoya. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that if you can share your screen, but I don't, I don't know if you can because you're in the car. There you are. I see you. Um, hi everybody. Um, I'm Latoya. Uh, so Tippa is amazing. Um, <laughs> it really is. And I'm a person who had zero knowledge of patents. It's not, it's not anything that has ever crossed my mind, honestly, unless I read something and I see patent pending or the patent number or something, I never think about it. But when I was at the convening, you know, that's the thing that comes up a lot. And it's something, like I said, I never thought of. Um, and I think the, the best part of TIPA, so first of all, it's only three modules. It says it'll take about eight hours. You could probably finish it in a shorter time. Um, the, the great part about it was, its focus was on underrepresented um, people. So people of color, women, um, and they talk to actual inventors who are uh, people of color and women <laughs> and their whole um, um, experience getting patent, the whole patent process. Um, it tells you a lot about um, the resources available um, because it does not have to be this big expensive um, process. There are options for you and it tells you that there's a resources um, um, link and there are so many resources like this hub uh, full of resources and you know it also directs you straight to the um, USPTO um, because I mean of course they they are the number one resource for patents um, and it was just amazing experience. I, I felt like if I ever get to the point where I need to help someone um, or if my, myself needs to start that process, I felt comfortable enough to know what to do. Um, all in all, I feel like it was very 
it wasn't a lot of fluff. It was actual things that were important and that you needed to know. It, it's it's like, if you want to do it, it's, it's not fluff. It's it's the meat that you need, but it's not it's not too techy. It's not too like legalese. It's, it's very um, easy to understand. And I, I found it enjoyable. I did it, I think in a weekend. Oh, Latoya, what can I say? I want to feature you on my LinkedIn. And she did, <laughs> she did talk about, LinkedIn. Uh, she actually did two posts on LinkedIn. I posted them in the, uh, in the chat for each of you to, uh, to read. And uh, I'm going to pause here because does anybody have questions for Latoya? Um, and then, you know, we're going to let her go and then, and then, you know, I can go next, but any questions for her? That was so good, Latoya. That Thanks for coming good. on. You're our primary source. You see, we have yes. a lot of these teachers on here. They like the primary sources. So thank you for being, <laughs> for being, being that role today. So that oh, no, good. no problem. I thought it was awesome. And I'm going to share with uh, teachers on my campus who like the robotics teacher, the engineering teacher, because I'm sure they don't know about it, and it's it's a good resource for them and their students. Uh, Terry has a question. Yeah. I think. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I just had a general question: Is the audience for TIPA is it educators or is this available also for, um, you know, like my high school students? Would they be able to go through it? I'll I'll take those kinds of questions. Uh, uh, so, but any other sort of like. <laughs> firsthand uh, experience uh, in terms of the tip experience and taking the course that that Latoya, uh, Latoya could answer, just so that we can let her go. And then I'll answer all, you know, I'll give you a little bit of a background and, and, and how we got to TIPA and all of that. But just from an experience, why, why you would invest the time, you know, from one educator to another. Any questions like that for her? That's Okay. Well, well, we'll share your emails. That's okay, Latoya. Oh, no, that's have, fine. Yeah. And uh, thank, oh, thank you so much. Yay, thank you so you. much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I have a question, Vicky, for um, the doctor. Uh, yes. Uh, so so <coughs> let, me, let me answer the first question, and then we can go right into questions. So the target audience is 18 and over. Okay, so this is a tool for adults. It is for your own uh, enrichment, uh, professional growth uh, in the area of patenting. Uh, you know, how do you file for a patent? What's the role of the USPTO? Uh, like Latoya just, you know, made all the major points that I was going to make. You know, how, you know, and then, and then the other part of it is, it is very much designed with people of color and women. In, in mind and so that is really there's a couple of things that is unique about our this course and one of them is that it is told through inventor stories their challenges their successes what what they wish they would have known uh it gives you the language uh of, of patenting you know so you get the vocabulary and then you really get you get a deep dive of what it's like to go through uh to file uh this patent through the uspto and so, yes, can uh, can high school students take it? Probably. Can savvy middle school teachers, uh, uh, middle school students probably, but it's not designed for them. It really isn't. It's designed for adults. And then the other thing to be very mindful of is that we actually collect data. We collect demographic data because it's the only way that we know on the back end if we're reaching our target audience. I mean, we clearly have a target audience to reach. The only way we can get that is by asking people to report. And that is why that is the number one reason this is not appropriate tool for students. It is 100% appropriate for their parents, for their caregivers, for yourselves to impart the knowledge, to be a mentor, to be a support system, but not for the students directly. Okay, so that was the first question. And then somebody else had another question for me. Who is that person? Dr. Langevin. Okay. Jean. You might, you just have to unmute, Jean. Yeah, so my concern is, um, is there one in your office that is suitable for students, for middle school students, I should say? Uh, is there, I'm sorry, is there a tool that's suitable for middle school students? Is that your question? 
Yes, that's correct. Okay, so what I do, what I would do is go to the USPTO. The USPTO has a robust uh, set of tools and resources for uh, K-12 students. Okay. The USPTO. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't have the hand, but, you know, I, that's one thing that I should have handy from now on. I'm, I'm posting it. I have it handy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, teamwork. But yes, <laughs> K-12, USPTO is your go-to. And okay. they, will, they will answer questions because I don't know if you know this, but in the United States, well, there's no age restrictions at all. We have five-year-olds who have actually applied for a patent. I'm not making that up. Yeah, absolutely. Me. <laughs> there's children that have patents, absolutely. But their parents have to, you know, basically yeah. do it on behalf of them. That's why it's a great resource for, par uh, for parents. You know, you could have all your parents, you know, or encourage your parents to take it. Absolutely, especially if they have, uh, you know, a, a child who's been ex extremely innovative and creative. I mean, it should be for everybody, but, you know, more so for, for parents that, you know, are looking for resources in particular. Okay, other questions? Thank you. No, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, I don't want to take up the whole time. I just want to do, I want to do a few key things. I actually um, dropped a, a, a different link in the chat to access the, uh, the tool and I'll tell you why, because it helps me track uh, uh, like the, my touch points, right? So on the, again, on the back end, I can, I can sort of uh, see how many people that, that I, cause this is my job to go out and, and, and uh, do my tip up pitch. And so it helps me get credit if you will for people that sign up. So if you could use that second link, that, that would be great. Um, and let me just, uh, I'm gonna share, let's see. And I don't do Zoom every day. So let me see if I can figure out how to do this. And um, I just posted it again in the chat. It's right there. It says Qualcomm at the end. Cause that's- Yeah, it says Qualcomm at the end. That's right. Um, so let me, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna share this flyer because at a, at a high level, I'll be able to, to really, um, give you a lot of information here. Um, okay, so the first thing to know is here, yeah, here are the six inventors that you get to meet and, and you get to uh, hear their stories, their, their, how they went from an idea to invention, to a patent, to a business, to a successful C, you know, CEOs and co-founders and inventors, okay? Uh, what is the course? The course is really designed to increase inventor diversity. That that is what what we care about. And if you want if you want to take it one step further and say, well, why does Qualcomm care about? We're a company of inventors. We are a company of in of innovators. Qualcomm does not make anything. We design chips. We innovate, uh, but we actually don't make anything. So the our we understand the value of invention, of innovation. We understand the impact that it can have on communities, uh, creating economic agency. And so that is why we co-created this course with Qualcomm and uh, an organization called Invent Together. So Invent Together, that's where the course is actually housed. And Invent Together is a coalition of organizations that care about patent diversity and inventor diversity. So that's sort of like the, the backstory as, as, as to why and who created it. And then um, here's the little QR code, the QR code, and then here's the link. And what the other, the other distinctive feature about this course is that it was a team of diverse experts that came together to create the course. So not only did we have uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion consultants? We had, you know, uh, one of our very own engineers contribute, and then you know, an <laughs> IT law professor, and then Aiko Bathia, who who does a lot of work on on sort of, you know, how do you increase um, diversity in in any type of system. <laughs> so we were very intentional about the course, and and you heard firsthand. Uh, from, <laughs> uh, from Latoya. And what I would say for me personally is, is, 
you know, I, you know, Dr. Gloria, what does that really mean? It, it really means that my entire professional career, I've dedicated to increasing the STEM pipeline, increasing diversity, whether it be in STEM or IP education. I'm extremely passionate about this the community. And I actually uh, use LinkedIn to promote uh, many of our individuals that are out there doing this kind of work. And so I'm gonna, the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, and I was a teacher, I was a K-12, I taught middle school and high school uh, out in uh, East LA for L uh, Los Angeles uh, uh, Unified School District. So I'm just looking for my slide here. I'm gonna show you one more slide. And then I will take more questions. Uh, I feel like, uh, okay, let me, thank you for your patience. Again, I'm not savvy with Zoom and I've got two screens. Okay, what's happening here? Where's my, okay, here we go, uh, share screen. Okay, so share, okay. I think this is it here. So I actually uh, invite you to follow me on LinkedIn. So Yolanda is, uh, I am tip, uh, a master teacher of intellectual property and innovation for the USPTO. And so I highlighted her story. I highlight students. I highlight uh, people in our community that are connecting uh, with invention and innovation. And that's why I said, you know, would love to highlight Latoya and the work that she's doing. And so uh, please stay connected. Uh, my, one of my uh, primary roles here at Qualcomm is to enable people to adopt this tool. So I am here as your resource if you need, if you need flyers, if you need um, support putting in on a, you know, uh, you know, on a, on a website, or, or you need something to help others, you know, other adults or some of the teachers, like they'll teach at the community college or, you know, they, they have the opportunity to, in, to interact with adult audiences. And so that would be an appropriate tool for them as well. The last thing that I'll say is that I am working on getting uh, hours on certificates so that teachers could use them as a professional development growth. Um, so I, I, we are working on that. And uh, I will pause here. You know, I, I've got more slides and um, more information, but I'd rather uh, take questions now. And then I can also just continue talking after we take a break. And also happy to be excused if I'm past my time. <laughs> no, no, no worries at all. And I, I do want to tell everyone we are trying to, um, we have a couple meetings left. And with one of the last couple meetings, we're trying to get, uh, one of our friends at USPTO, um, who can talk a little bit more to, you know, how you can work with students in your class uh, to discuss some of these issues. Um, so I just wanted to, th to throw that out there. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Gloria, uh, please, please do stay and, uh, and uh, share what you have to share. And, um, you know, any, I, th I think this is something that is intimidating to a lot of teachers. And mm -hmm. I think that this pathway is a good one to sort of get over get beyond that intimidation no matter what subject area you, te you teach what level you teach and then once you have it it's it's easier to work into um everything that you do related to invention we have a lot of teachers um and it's kind of the way that we present it but a lot of teachers that save it for the end and it's it's good to start thinking about and talking about even at the beginning of the year if you're making this part of uh, part of your 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 teaching curriculum can you make, can you talk about the role of entrepreneurship? Because that's also what we hear from a lot of our teachers, mm -hmm. teachers or a lot of our fellows. So when, if, if you continue with your slides, sure. great, but just like the role, the idea that kids can, you know, create, they can start yes. businesses, they can absolutely entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, we, so that's a great point. So I was thinking if I were a teacher, if I were an educator, you know, and I took this, this course, or if I went back into the classroom, you know, what, what, how would I use it? Right. What, what could be my role? And I think, so one of the things that you could do is be a mentor, right? 
So it turns out, and we're just, there, there's going to be a research uh, study, and this is the, the panel presentation that I, that I did was uh, to talk about the role of trust in, uh, in patenting. And so this paper, we're going to uh, invent together, we'll be releasing a paper next week. Uh, and uh, the researchers, they, they interviewed, did surveys of inventors, uh, you know, future inventors or in, inventors that, you know, had potentially a, a, an interest in, in inventing. And so one of the things, and, and they did it, you know, uh, people of color, men, women, you know, they, they took a large swath of, um, of interviewees. So one of the things that they found is that a, a lot of people just don't know. Just like Latoya said, I've never thought about it. I didn't know this existed. Wow, this is amazing. And some future, potentially me, or maybe if I know someone. So it turns out that to patent, you actually need a network of people. Having a network of people is critical for your success in patenting. And so, and they not only a, a network, but they have to be a trusted, they have to be trusted individuals. And who more than anyone are teachers? Teachers are trusted mentors of students. You are the very first person. And so you have a very powerful role to be a mentor, to be a trusted mentor, and to simply have the information that you could provide to say, yes, there's a whole office. It's called the USPTO. And if you have an idea, you can protect that idea. Step one, you can create a business plan. You can commercialize. You can create independent, economic independence for yourself, for your family, and for your community, right? So I think at a very basic level, yourself understanding the process, understanding that there's pro bono services. So there are services, for example, the USPTO offers free uh, legal services to, to individuals that qualify. And students, again, their parents would have to do this, but it does not preclude students. Students could file for a patent. They have filed for a patent. And so I think that's a, it, it's, it's really, it, and do you all know that it's written, it's part of our constitutional rights. It's written in the constitution, right? I mean, that, that's like, wow, what? Um, and it, it's really, it's the, it's the engine for innovation in, in our country is this patent system so so it's sort of like an exchange like so in exchange for for your idea to benefit your you know your idea that gets uh you know basically converted to an invention and then patented and then you you get issued a patent the government says okay you're gonna we're gonna protect your your invention for x amount of years so that you can build a business and, and you know, because it's only like 20 to 25 years that you get this protection. Uh, and then in return, society will, will uh, benefit from the innovation, right? So um, I'll, I will stop there again to see if there's more questions. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, are there any hesitations about uh, registering for TIPA and completing it? I'm curious. Oh, okay. Well, actually, um, this oh. is Lillian. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi, Lillian. Thank you um, for your question. So I, I don't have any hesitations. To be honest with you, um, I was sitting here thinking, I used to be a history teacher. Uh -huh. um, ninth grade economics teacher. So to be honest with you, when I taught entrepreneurship, um, what you're describing actually goes hand in hand with what we have here in Arkansas called Economics Arkansas that um, actually pushes the patent, patent, patent process and trying to develop that in classrooms because um, I think we mentioned it earlier, kids come up with the best ideas and they know how to make money if given the opportunity to make money in a correct manner. However, one of my concerns is, is that now I've switched over into English. So mm -hmm. I teach sixth grade English now, 
And even though I know the process, the training is more so for adults, how can I take this information and use it in an English class? Um, ah, because okay. like I said, because one of the things, one of my strong points has been this year is that um, even with my administrators, it's like, you will integrate math, you will integrate science, I will integrate history into an English class. Mm-hmm. And so, so that way my kids can utilize the show. It is important for you to know how to write. It's important for you to know how to read properly. Because if you can't read correctly, it show the heck can't fill out a patent form. Right. So, so how, so what would you su- suggest and how yeah. I can make it apply for an English class? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for making me think on my feet. I love it. Okay. So if I were in your shoes, so first of all, I, I would take, I would invest the time to take the Inventors Pen Academy because you're going to, you know, you're going to learn uh, vocabulary, you're going to learn the process. You're going to get to meet these inventors, right? Um, and so, uh, like, there's nothing that precludes you from showing the videos of the inventors to your students, right? Like, you could do that. Um, but I think what I would do is I would, if you're allowed to bring in history, like I said, it's part of the Constitution, right? So that there, there's there's something there to be said about, like, huh, why do we, why is innovation important, right? Why is innovation important? And is it not possible that they could come up with an idea, right, that then uh, theoretically then, you know, could turn it, you know, into an invention to then say, okay, you're going to patent this. And to, to your point, to patent this, you have to fill out an application. So then from there, I would go to the USPTO and and look for some K-12 resources and, and, and you know, and, and follow I am positive they've got somewhere on their website a template, something that says this is the these are the parts of a of a patent, and then have them write that in, right? Like you know, have them put it's it's technical knowledge, right? So I know that in English, I hope that there's still like a component of you know technical writing versus you know prose versus you know like like all the different genres of writing. This could fulfill the check the box technical writing but i mean we've got other educators here um, other ideas or anybody would like to echo or add to what i'm what i'm suggesting well you kind of really touched upon what i i was thinking you know in my mind this out how it would play out i know mm-hmm. last week we, uh, well actually monday i was blessed to be in the area where we had the total eclipse and so yeah. as opposed to Last week, my 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 coworkers were, were reading about um, the Phantom Toll Booth or, or whatever they were doing. I scrapped all of that, and I was like, "We're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how English is used in the science class." So we did the whole entire week on the um, the solar eclipse. And actually, the science teacher came over and she told me I stole her thunder. <laughs> but okay. I was able. But I was able to really like push. How do you write scientifically? How do you yes. write in a professional mm-hmm. manner? That's going to be different from when you're writing an essay or a story. Correct. You have to know how to write technical, that someone can follow your instructions. So it's really interesting how they learned how to write step-by-step, step, really using the scientific method and how to use, do it in a proper manner. So thank you for that, because that will actually can help me even writing, um, doing comprehension, gauging right. the they thoroughly understand and come up with questions so that they're understanding what I'm trying to question them on. So thanks. So even just come up, coming up with an idea, right? That's type of right. That's like writing English. Like you, you have to be able to communicate your idea to create an invention, right? Like, so that's a process. And here's a, a really cool thing. If you could finish TIPA before April 26th, April 26th is World IP Day. So you could have you could have a lesson, you know, on uh, World IP Day. What is IP? Why is it important? How can you participate? Yeah. How is it related to our our U.S. Uh, Constitution, right? As a, how does it help our country, uh, you know, innovate and stay, you know, ahead technolo- uh, technologically? Yeah. And I see a lot of a lot of really great ideas in the chat too. So make sure you look at that, Lillian. 
uh, a lot, lots of people uh, dropping in some links for you as well and ideas. Okay. Any more questions? It was great. Okay. Well, um, I'm I'm here as a resource. I'm happy to uh, uh, my email address. Uh, I think is in the meeting invite. You all can have access to it. I'm happy to have individual conversations with each of you. Uh, hope to see you on LinkedIn. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Dr. Gloria. That take was care. great. Bye. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Seven thirty-six. Luke, take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, just to just to kind of wrap up, you know, we we're happy to have uh, Dr. Gloria come uh, to speak to us today. Partly because this is a really important part of the process, and I know a lot of you have mentioned that you, you know you kind of get the idea of investment education, but you, know, you want to tie it in a little bit more towards to uh, entrepreneurship. And having your students feel like, oh, you know, maybe I can do something with these ideas. Um, and so I would, I would say, you know, other than tonight, we're hoping to have a representative from USPTO come and talk not just about the patenting process, but you know, a big part of this uh, this phase of the invention process that you can build on if you're an English teacher or a social studies teacher is getting your students to practice communicating their ideas. And Dr. Gloria talked about that a little bit for sure. Um, but, you know, if you haven't checked them out yet, I would definitely recommend taking a look at um, the two uh, sort of intro lessons that we put, uh, that I put in the chat here. One is on, you know, how students can pitch their inventions and their ideas. And one is about the patent process specifically. And they they go hand in hand in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's possible to use the patent process as kind of a, a template or a model to get students to think about, uh, you know, what makes their idea different, what makes their idea purposeful and unique and helpful to other people, and really think about who the audience is and how they can uh, communicate, uh, uh, you know, the value of their invention to other people. It's, a, it's an important part of the process, and it's one I think where uh, English teachers and social studies teachers can get a lot of. Uh, sort of learning goal value out of it. You know, STEM teachers too, of course, but, you know, if you're an English teacher and you want to, you know, use some of these invention concepts, it's a great way to um, to bring that in. Um, but, you know, I'm going to do kind of a hard shift here. The original point of uh, our, our, our purpose of our meeting tonight was just to catch up and talk about uh, what has been going on in your classrooms and give people a chance to to share uh, what's been happening. Uh, and one question I wanted, Vic and I were talking this morning, one question I wanted to ask all of you is who here is still in the middle of, of testing? I think there's a difference between, even if you just put it in the chat, like who's doing who's doing testing right now, like significant testing. <laughs> and uh, if you can put it in the chat too, like when does that usually occur to you in your state at your grade level? Oh, Cindy, you just began. Yeah, we have, Let, two, we have two more full weeks of testing. Oh my gosh! And you're yeah, yeah okay. And you 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 have had a chance though recently to do uh, invention and invention lessons. Yes. Oh my gosh, y'all! They did some exciting stuff, and I was so <laughs> proud of them. I used the invasive species lesson. And look at this, look at this. Okay, now we did invasive species in Tennessee and the mimosa tree is one of them. Okay, I don't know if you can really see this or not. Uh -oh. oh, we can, it's amazing. But on the back is a complete explanation for how this machine not only gets the mimosa tree with all of its roots, but it wraps it up so that none of the seeds can fall, none of the flowers can fall takes it on the inside and burns it yeah then there was another one and I don't know how to share my screen but he did a oh what was it called some kind of 3d thing on his computer and sent it to me and it's absolutely amazing and his it kind of looks it's like that but his 3d imaging is 
unbelievable with what he's done. This one was getting rid of zebra mussels. And this particular robot only takes in the zebra mussels and does not kill them. They relocate them to their native habitat. Because we had that discussion about ethics, you know, do we kill them? Do we try to preserve them and relocate um, them? What do we do? And so, you know, this is sixth graders now. Um, I was really proud of them. That's so cool. That's mm -hmm. so. So, it, just could you remind people what what do you uh, what do you teach specifically? How do how um, I teach sixth uh, and seventh grade science, and I teach in a gifted program. It's a like a magnet hallway that's in within our school, and it's called the Academic Academy. Yeah. And so they they are very bright, intelligent children, and they either go one way or the other. They either give me something that's okay. I'm going to put some some kind of spray in a bottle and that's going to kill it. Okay. Of course, then, you know, we have to have the conversations about all the different sprays and what else is it going to kill and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but they can't think out of that box. They're going original. What, what, what can I do? And then I've got these other kids who are like, Oh, wow, I can do this. I could build this, you know? So it's, it's really been exciting to watch them do that. Oh, that's God. awesome mm -hmm. and uh, that's so I, cool. oh go ahead Vic oh, I love it it's good stuff and how did you come up with the idea of uh, focusing on invasive uh, species okay that is a standard remember I have to meet all these standards <laughs> and there's like a ton of them that we have to get in and this absolutely fits so well with the standard that's been part of my problem is finding lessons that will meet my standards so I've been looking at some to see what I could kind of tweak a little bit and the one um y'all just showed it just a second ago it was the little girl and she had to have a that's a good one. Yeah, that's assistive yes. devices where they build a prosthetic for her hand because she was born without a hand. And every year when she gets bigger and bigger, they yes. the college kids. I mean, these are not, you know, again, it's not MIT. It's like it's a good school where they're at, but they right. don't have a new hand. Well, and the seventh grade standard has to do with biomaterials and how they could use those and think about how it's going to interact with the body because see we've done some chemistry at this point and is are these things going to interact are they going to produce a toxin with other chemicals in the body so I'm going to work on that one and try to tweak it because I really want to use it so I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how to put it all together right now but I'm going to do that with my seventh graders before the end of the year oh that's great yeah, so I'll have that one. And they usually build a 3D model for me. So that'll be interesting. I'll show you those to you when I get them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I love it when the middle schoolers too come up with these these incredible ideas. It's a, it's a good age. When will you take a picture to send it to us so we can put it on social media? We put a lot of sketches and drawings on social media. Yes, Literally absolutely. like how, that's what you have to submit to get a patent. <laughs> literally a drawing so right exactly so, not, not much different right mm -hmm. yeah but it's exciting like I said I, I don't know how to show y'all this 3d image that he sent me it's on SketchUp okay wait a minute well you, you should see. be able to hit share screen at the bottom I think you're, okay you know you Let have permission back to over here uh share all right y'all look at this ah, wow. um, so you can make it move this is the zebra muscle um one that's going to hold it and this tank has ballast so it can ascend and descend i mean the kid went into a lot of detail he is going to go far i mean i can see an engineer here with him but um but he he talks about exactly how it works and what it does and I asked him if he had done a model of the inside and he said no I just didn't have enough time to for your due date <laughs> so but that's that's what he ended up with I just thought it was amazing 
That's so cool. And did did you tell your students about this or did he find it on his own? This Oh, uh, no, he did yeah. this on his own. I didn't know anything about this. Listen, they know a lot more about the different <laughs> programs than I do. They They educate me all the time that if something happens on my computer, usually one of them comes over and helps me. So, yeah, I'm still learning all this stuff, but. But yeah, this is called SketchUp, I think I said. So I had never seen it. But it? but this this would be great as the uh with the computer 3D stuff. So who was talking about that earlier? Kevin? I think was so. that Kevin talking about the 3D working with schools with that? Offering yeah. the computer oh, yeah. that makes the 3D image. I mean, something like that would be great for this too, for this kid, because he would love that. Yeah, like a, a 3D printer? Is that what you're talk, talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm. Yeah, has anyone else, does anyone else have students that have used uh, software like this? This is probably pretty accessible if a student found it on his own SketchUp or... Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, Adobe programs. Um, you know, you'll find it in Adobe uh, Creative Cloud uh that that'll do similar things sketchup is actually a a pretty simple uh program to use which is great uh, a lot of times it's free as opposed to adobe uh so sketchup really good uh you could actually use sketchup with other programs like lumion so lumion would um make that a lot more uh, like maybe realistic looking um so yeah how do we find that oh, i would it, love to help this kid find it do i just google it what i yeah. mean yeah what's yeah. it called uh, Lumion is another program. It, it's very expensive though. Uh, so oh. so his, his best bet is to use Adobe Creative Cloud, which has a lot okay. of, yeah, that's, that's your best bet. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I did, you know, want to get some of you to brag a little bit about what you've been doing, but, uh, you know, so I, I, I want to give everyone a chance to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if things go quiet, maybe I'll send you off into smaller groups where you might be a little bit more comfortable talking about that and, you know, talking about, you know, what your plans are for the rest of the year. But, you know, I also wanted to say, yeah, I know a lot of you are in the middle of testing right now. Um, so you know, we have probably about three more meetings, uh, you know, including this one. And what I want to do, and I'll send out more information about this tomorrow, but I want to start moving towards, uh, you know, creating like, you know, little individual folders or bundles for all of you to, so you can put in, you know, whatever you've done at the end of the year. Because the one thing that I'm freaked out about that I don't want to happen is I keep hearing about the amazing things that you all are doing when, when we're face to face. But unless I ask you about it directly, I don't necessarily hear it. So I want to make sure that we we get a sense of like all the cool stuff that you guys are doing. So I'll send out an email about that tomorrow and we can start creating like little portfolios for all of you. Nothing intimidating, but I'll send, you know, uh, a list of the kind of things that we're excited to, to see. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Monica, <laughs> you can't let me freak out. Um, but I'm going to stop blabbing for a second here. And if anyone else has anything that they've tried with their class recently, since we all, got together and, and talked, uh, would love to, to hear about it, whether it's, you know, something recent or even the whole year that you haven't had a chance to talk about with the group yet. I can jump in. Yes, um, I think good. I've talked about it with the group as much, but um, uh, for those of you who don't remember or know that I teach both middle school and high school at the online campus. And so we are, Com our students are completely virtual. And so there, this was the first year for us to do the STEM fair to kind of reincorporate ourselves back into the regular process because this it's a pretty new program, um, the virtual school. And so my goal was to get us integrated back into the everyday things that students would do. And so people were like, how are your students going to do these things when they're, you're not face-to-face? -face? And I was like, we're going to make it work. And so I can tell you that in previous years that the projects were more focused on, I don't want to say, they were kind of basic. And the, incorporate, the incorporation of the invention education lessons 
Uh, starting off, of course, with Deja Taylor, introducing well, who is an inventor, what is an inventor. It started to make them think about, uh, think more globally and how they can create something and, and not just look for somebody else's project that they can find online, just, you know, some kit that they can just put together online. And so the submissions that I received this year for the STEM fair were, um, I want to say 50% engineering, created projects, you know, designs. And one of them, um, who was our winner for our school STEM fair, actually went to the county and received an award from the Society of Women Engineers. And she's an author. She's a 10th grader. And she has she wrote a book, which was already amazing, and had a signing at Barnes & Noble and all this. But she has a relative who has a disability and was not able to um, navigate using the paper copies of her book. And she created a prototype that would actually uh, turn the pages of the of her book because she didn't want her to be restricted to only using the uh, digital version of the book. But she's like, she wanted to use the paper copy. So why she's going to make something so that, um, so that, you know, that, that kind of thinking, that kind of, um, I credit that to the lessons and that's a transition for me. You all know that that was new for me. And so introducing those lessons and putting that forward, those are the kind of projects that I'm seeing coming from my students. These great ideas about how to connect them to real world and to things that are happening in their lives and building them and moving forward and actually getting the accolades and seeing you know, where she can go with that. So I think I'm frozen. Uh, nope. She created the prototype. And that's another reason, another reason why I was asking the questions about the, um, the patent uh, program, because that's where, you know, she's thinking about what's her next step. What could she do with this, you know, newfound invention? And so that I told, you know, her parents and her that I would try to find, you know, the information and be able to support her in in that that next step. And so I'm I'm excited to see where we're going to go and where a couple of my other students that are revising their their um, inventions as well. That was it. That's so cool. And you showed me a photo of that at uh, at, at the convening. I, it, that was that was awesome to see. And this is a this is a student that wrote her own book too. And I was like, well, I'm a published author now. Why not be an inventor as well? <laughs> That's so cool. Um, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, five minutes till, till eight for you people on the East coast. I think what I'm going to do is set up a few groups, um, just to make it a little bit more comfortable for you all to, uh, to talk about what you're doing. And, you know, this isn't, this isn't about like, you know, what's well, a little bit about showing off, but it's really just talking about what, what's working and what's maybe not working for you so far. Um, so, you know, you can talk about what you've been doing with your students, uh, but then also what do you plan to do with the rest of the year? You know, I know time is limited. Many of you have been in testing season or you're going into testing season. So what makes sense with the last couple of months of the year? What's What are some achievable goals um, in, in invention education uh, with your, with your, uh, your students? So I'm going to set up, we have a pretty small group. So, uh, if you want, you can kind of use the team guides that are on the agenda, you know, the teams that you've been in before, but I'm going to set up, let's see how many people do that? One, two, three. I'm going to set up just three groups tonight. Um, and you can just kind of jump in one that doesn't have too many people. Uh, and uh, that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. So breakout rooms. And we'll just, we'll just have you just jump into those groups for like 10 minutes, then we'll come back uh, together. Oops. All right, do you all remember how to do this? So there's three rooms and you just go down to the bottom with those three little dots and you can uh, open up the breakout room box and then choose which one you wanna go into. And he did. He was telling me all about it. And so it was pretty exciting. It really was. And I wish I had a way for him to do, you know, some sort of 3D model 
Um, I don't think our STEM lab has a 3D printer thingy, but I may have to ask and see. She might well, if, in there. If, if they, uh, if you don't have access to one, uh, get a hold of me and if you can send me the STL file I can 3D print it sure I don't know what that is but yeah I, I don't know what an STL whatever you said is he would have to go into the program and convert it I'm sure he oh. knows how to do it um, but I'll have to get one of our tech people on that. Because that is, that's way above my pay grade. Well, your email's in the in the list. I'll shoot you an yeah, email, and and we can we'll get together on that. I I would gladly three D print it for you. That would be wonderful, and I think he would be so excited to actually see it in his hands because I think he's one of these that could be one of those entrepreneurs. It's funny, and, I have a, a, a former student who was a total uh, musician student. He was in band, choir, and we had a course fair, and he <laughs> saw the 3D printer, and it changed his, he dropped all of his music classes, took all the engineering classes, and now he works for an aerospace firm in Houston, and oh. he designs uh engine parts for rockets and different things and 3d and what sort of community service project could help the people in that community because all our students are supposed to put in a hundred hours of community service over the course of their four years and they all have to complete what we call in California a service learning project as a, a high school graduation requirement so I'm just kind of getting them thinking about that and some of them have good ideas for inventions, but I don't think anybody's going to cure cancer quite yet. Scott, I really like what you're doing because I think it kind of plants that seed. Mm -hmm. And then you never know where, where, you know, what the next step is, but to get them thinking about, I can play a role in helping my community. Like, you know, so you don't have to start from scratch right. and it might just be, taking something that's already been done. And we talk about that um, and with my students about like, you know, we're like on iPhone 15 now, where we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't start there. And so you might not have to start from scratch, but you're still innovating and you're still inventing because you're improving something. And so they might not necessarily have to create something out of the, you know, out of the sky, but that they might make an improvement that makes something even better to, to be able to reach more people or to have a greater impact, even in, you know, on a small scale. And so I think just getting them thinking about it is going to make them see things that they, they weren't necessarily looking at before. Thank I agree. You. Were you able to um, have your students ask people in the medical profession, like people in nursing homes or EMTs or people in the ER or even like when they just go for like an annual checkup at the doctor like what is something that would make your job easier like were they able to have those conversations with people in the community so actually um they did uh, one of them formed a club and they actually went and they started playing board games with people in the local um convalescent home or senior citizen center and they actually got our school board member excited about that. And he came down and played with them too. So um, they're, they're kind of looking for, again, I, I feel like um, taking this in a direction, but they're taking it in the direction of community service as opposed to innovation, invention. And, uh, you know, I think we all know now why I'm not an English teacher because I get, you know, caught up in the semantics. <laughs> Well, I think those two could even go hand in hand. I think you might be right. able to, to do both. Oh, yeah. Everyone's coming back. <laughs> Great. It always is the 60 second countdown. It's like, huh? It seems like a lot of time, but I guess we all panic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I think people are, are going to, some folks might wait till the final countdown, but, uh, does anyone want to, af after like being in the smaller group, is anyone uh, a little more, more comfortable to share what, what they've been up to? 
Any interesting revelations? I, yeah. I just shared with the group, um, Luke, that on Saturday, I had the opportunity to be a judge in the Illinois Invention Convention. So if anybody is wanting to have students participate in their local or state invention convention, I highly recommend um, being a judge first, or at least getting the um, the opportunity to be a judge, because then you get that whole kind of well-rounded um, sphere of understanding of what your kids will go through and having the the perspective of being a judge kind of helps you sort of you know fine tune what you need to see and and I had students who were inventing from second grade to to fifth grade and and they were adorable you get to see their log books their pitch videos and then you get to meet them in person and ask questions with a panel of other judges and students so a great experience get involved. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's one thing that came out of this uh, convening that some folks went to, including Trisha. Is that where you signed up for it or were you already kind of connected to it in, in a way? I was I was already connected to it before um, our convening, um, although I am interested in doing the Henry Ford one because I'm sure those will be super fancy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. And, it, you know, just for anyone that's interested in this, I can send a link uh, as well. Uh, we had, uh, I don't know if you all remember Lucy Owl. She has a, a, kind of like a, a British accent, um, but she does, she, she was our guest one night from the Henry Ford invention convention. And uh, that's, you know, a big national, you could call it a competition, but one of the things that I like about it is it's, it's not set up to sort of pit the students against each other. It's really sort of a, just a chance for them to communicate and share uh, there are amazing ideas. It is kind of a competition. There are winners, but they do a really good job of making everyone, every, all the students feel like they're, they're special for, for being part of it. Um, so there is that national con uh, invention convention. Many, many states have their own statewide invention convention. And that's something that you get your students involved with. It's something that you can uh, be a judge for if you're not really in a position to get your students involved at the at the moment uh and it's it's really really rewarding um there are a number of states that don't have their own invention convention yet but you can if you're interested you can serve as a as a judge uh for what's called independent or unaffiliated um uh students who are in these states without an invention convention or you know you can enter your students as as independents as well um and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a, a cool opportunity, both for teachers and for students, I think. Uh, anyone else? Terry, I saw you I saw you pointing at least. Maybe you're trying to you're trying to volunteer someone else. <laughs> I'm so interested to tell me about the float. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So I just have uh, my students are doing a citizen science project with students from all over the the world, mainly from France. Um, and they have adopted, we've adopted six different ocean floats that are floating about in all the oceans. Um, each class has one different float and these floats have all these different scientific sensors on them. And lo and behold, as we're nearing the end of the project, the head of the, the organization in France said, oh, by the way, your students need to do this one extra project. And I was like, what is it? It's called a mystery sensor. And I look at it, it's an invention. So my students get to invent, if they could invent any sensor that would be on this ocean float, what would it be? And so um, we do have one more invention that we'll be doing this this school year as a result of a citizen science project. It was just serendipitous. So I'm super excited about that too. Oh, that's cool. Citizen science. Mm -hmm. Got it. But anyone else? Uh feeling willing to share what's what's been going on or if if you feel like it's it's not quite there yet with your class like what 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 plans you might have and then, you know this applies too to uh we have some folks from past past year fellowship i can share um i actually recently went to the nsta conference the national science teaching association conference in denver and i had the pleasure of presenting with vicky and marty um, on Invention Convention, and that was amazing. They were great team players. We actually, um, Vicki brought in the little girl with the prosthetic arm, and she introduced 
that as part of our project. And that was a great uh, lead into the mystery bag activity that we did. So we took that and that was um, mentioned in one of our previous uh, um, experiences together. And um, it was fun to do that with adults because it, when I was in the breakout, I was telling them I did the same thing with my kindergartners. <laughs> oh yeah. And so I think it's, you know, you struggle, you have rewards. I just think getting adults, kids, whoever, just to break the ice, because one person raised their hand and said, what if, you know, you have those kids that just, you know, have a roadblock. And even some of the adults in the, um, that were at our session, they even had roadblocks. You know, they're not creative or they think themselves as not being creative. And I think that getting those kids young to think, hey, I'm going to fail, but, you know, I'm just going to move on because it's really a part of success. And um, Vicki, do you want to chime in on um, anything else that maybe you had to take away with from that? Because I thought it was really powerful to oh, um, have so good. people experience that that breakout that we did. Okay, uh, mostly that's the breakout there. Uh, by the way, the head of PBS Learning Media came, showed up, and I was like, oh my gosh. And it was great, Marty, a uh, fellow from last year, and Mary Lynn. I mean, they just did a wonderful, wonderful job. And as you can see from Lori Britton, she's totally into it with this teacher. She did joke and was like, oh, if you, I knew you were going to put me to work in this workshop, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> and the thing about science teachers is they're always going to make you do an activity. That's it. It makes the conferences so fun. I was doing DNA pipettes. Oh, God, Terry, you would have uh, lost it trying to see. And the teachers were trying to help me with the pipettes because they're like, this girl doesn't know what she's doing. But um, honestly, Mary Lynn's tremendous. And the guys, there was like, I don't know how many thousands of people were in this massive auditorium, but um, I, I I am, she, Mary Lynn got to runner up for the Shell Awards and like got to stand up and be recognized at this like rock concert event where she, you know, got the shout out from Shell and the head of NSTA. So again, like I can't say it enough. There's so many things that I really, really still don't know that you're doing and then when we find out something like that I got I'm like I gotta give her the shout out because the year gets amazing but like I I wanna we wanna you know know more and um so always share <laughs> I guess with us is what we're saying Thank but you. honestly it was just great and uh we had a wonderful time and we used you all know, remember that grab bag invention that was like the first thing and I was like take videos of your kids and we've edited a lot of those and we've been able to share and some are going into this montage that's still being edited if you're wondering um that it will be used trust me but um like those four things i mean it was like nomads finding water they're serious inventions it's not like they're not you know it's important stuff but anyways i see kevin has his hand up i'll be quiet i just wanted to say i want to give the shout out back to you mary lynn that was a blast presenting with you i i don't like presenting at conferences and i love luke and i know luke loves me but i said i we only present with fellow with teachers if one of us goes to a conference, we make sure the other person's, we're always with a teacher, an in-the-classroom teacher. So we divide up the conferences because that's so important to us. Okay. Okay. I see Kevin. Kevin, take it away. Um, I see his hand up. He wants to say something smart, I can tell. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of a, a favor. Um, my students are have been piloting a school day invention curriculum for Lemelson MIT this year. And next Wednesday evening from six to eight, um, my students are presenting, they're doing their mid project review, so to speak. And I think we're gonna do a live stream. And is that something, would you all share a link for us to the group? Oh yeah. And they can pop in and, um oh that's wonderful so is it something what, our, what we're trying to accomplish is have oh go ahead oh i was just gonna ask is this something that you want us to share uh on social media um, open to the public or just within the group yeah you could do i'm gonna post it on facebook and and the the state 
board of education will probably share it out so yeah just um i'll send you the link and just put it out there for everybody okay, um, great. but we're trying to get an invention curriculum that will fit within the school day and you know make it available for middle and high school and just you know make it a science class or some kind of gateway into stem maybe maybe you know we're we're still working it all out but um greenbrier east was one of the schools and then there were two other pilot schools in california but you know if you guys i would love to have all of you there to see the students um it, it it's a fun night it's it's a stressful day for them but uh but they do the whole show i i try to stay out of their way <laughs> but i'll have that to you maybe tuesday or so when we get a little closer to the event um because we got to check out the internet in the building that we'll be presenting in oh of course we're going to share it with this whole group and everywhere yeah definitely send it to us I will. Oh, congratulations. That's amazing. A full, full, a full, I, I only just found out about this again. One of those full in, in school, in the class is an invention education class. Really pretty, you're sort of at the, that's definitely a, in pilot, pilot territory. I've had a lot of people are interested in, in it and over, you know, overall, has it been, would you say a success? Would you say you're learning a lot? Is it I am I am learning a lot. With invent teams, you get that that seventy five hundred dollar grant. This year, I ran it on my classroom budget, and we've only worked after school one day. So it's everything that you see Wednesday night will have been done during the school day. And in forty five minute classes. So, how many times a week? Five days a week. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it was, it's a challenge. It, it was funny. Yesterday, my daughter told me to go back and sit in my office that they had it under control. So, so I'm hoping for good things. That's usually a good sign. When I get sent out of the room, um, you know, that, that usually means they're on top of things. But we have one group that's inventing a hydraulic wheelchair that lifts the seat up so uh, people can transfer to different height or different levels in their wheelchair with a transfer board in the wheelchair. And then the other one is a thermal camera integrated into a firefighter's mask where they can look out of the mask and then see thermal imaging in real time so okay i don't know what i've done really... oh what i've done with my life anyways uh no but kevin that is amazing i have to ask are there any kids that aren't like total engineer nerds in that class do you get did you get a mix or mostly at this point is it stem it, it's kids? funny i was thinking about that today i have two football players, uh, an outdoorsman, uh, uh, let's see, a D&D &D player, an English as a second language student, um, I guess one I would consider a diva. Uh, so I mean, it's a, it's a hodgepodge of kids that normally wouldn't work together. But I mean, they, you know, they chose a problem. I made them all present. They had to get up and duke it out and fight for their the, the problem they wanted to solve. And, um, you know, I rolled out butcher paper on the table. They all drew up their sketches and wrote out, you know, their ideas and everything. They went through the whole process. And, you know, I, I try not to meddle. I have to sit on my hands a lot of days because I want to jump in, but, you know, it's not my job to do that. But they're 3D printing. They're they're doing everything. Um, one boy's been teaching himself how to code. 
because I I'm a horrible I'm horrible at coding and he had he figured something else out. I'm starting but, to learn. I'm starting to learn through Vex Robotics, and I have total English brain, social studies brain. So this has been uh, an exciting adventure slash nightmare. Um, <laughs> but truthfully, it's actually really good. Um, I want to say that I forgot. So Kevin, that's amazing. But real quickly, we really do have some young. We have a couple of young. So kind of on the other side of things. But um, we have a fellow from last year, Monica Mormons, who's joining us, who's from Florida, who's amazing, meeting fellow Florida, also elementary school teacher, Mary Lynn Hess. And I just wanted to connect you guys because Mary Lynn Hess is like, Vicki, you need a couple more elementary kids, teachers in here. And um, uh, Monica came tonight. Also, Monica's won all sorts of cool National Geographic type stuff. So I'm going to introduce you both. And... Uh, I'm going to ask that really obnoxious, ridiculous a question. You guys don't know each other, do you? Well, we actually do. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here, here's the funny thing is we were just on a call at uh, 430 um, doing some agriculture um, cadre for writing lessons. And so when we got in the same room in this tonight, and I'm like, I know you. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have to connect you. That's amazing. That's and thank you for thinking of me and us and all that. And I see Trisha, she's at Pine, are you at Pinecrest, Trisha? No, where, where, where are you in, you're in Florida, right? Or no? No, I'm in Chicago. Chicago. Okay. But you're elementary too, right? No, middle school. Oh, I think I gave you bad information. I'll uh, just call me fake news, Vicky. Okay. I'm, yeah, fake news. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that was me. It's okay. That was my call. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you for being considerate. Thank you for understanding. Okay, but I'm going to write you and Monica after this. Luke? Yeah, okay. Well, we just have a few minutes left. Anyone else want to have anything they want to share or say? Some, some brags to get in before we go? Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's what's coming up. Anyone? No? Okay, well, if you ever want to just write the group, this is something that we love. And it's, it's a couple of you have done this, but if you ever just want to hit reply to one of those emails that has everyone's email address on it and share anything that you're doing, uh, that's extremely welcome. I think it's uh, probably the impression that I get is even more uh, than the expert guests that we bring on, just being able to talk to each other about you know what you're doing and what's working in your classes is maybe, uh, you know, where you're going to get most out of the, the, the fellowship. So hearing what you all do, seeing the videos, I think that's that's super helpful. Anything you want to share, please do. Um, so after today, I think we have just two more meetings on the schedule. Uh, and one of those, uh, the guest, the guest is like one of two guests. Either we're going to finally get one of our PBS journalists <laughs> to uh, to join us and, and talk about their work and, you know, how we can, how we can, uh, use science reporting uh, as sort of a basis for some of the things that we're doing with invention education. Or uh, we're gonna get some of our friends from the US Patent and Trademark Office because we really want to uh, help you all think about that moment, not just sort of when students have had the brainstorm, but when they are eager, excited to communicate their ideas. You know, that's, that's patents, but it's also just learning how to talk about what makes their, uh, invention helpful uh, to their target audience. So that's something we want to cover too. And then the very last meeting uh, is going to be kind of like this, uh, but maybe a little bit more formal. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you all to sort of, you know, we'll, we'll gather all the stuff that you've done and maybe do like a couple minute uh, little, little, it could be a slideshow, could be a little presentation, just a chance to brag about what you've you've done and what you've learned and maybe you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be, uh, join the cult. It can be like, Hey, you know, this, this was fun, but I'm not going to do it next year. <laughs> or, you know, this is, these are some things I'm, I took from the experience. Um, and going to, I'm going to incorporate them into, uh, my learning goals next year. I might not do the full invention education thing because we're really interested in like how teachers can actually use this kind of material in their classrooms. So that's probably going to be the last one in June. We'll make it a little bit of a party. 
But uh, tomorrow I'll send out a little bit more instructions for that, you know, sort of maybe some materials to, to gather up. And it's, it's not going to be like high pressure or anything, but, uh, you know, this, this, if, if there's a theme of tonight in the last couple months is that there's, I know that there's a lot of really interesting things that you all are doing and we don't always hear about it until we're just talking with you one-on-one, -on -one. you know, when I had the one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone, it's like, I can't believe you're doing these cool things. I didn't know about it until this moment. So we're gonna we're gonna pull all that out of you over the next couple of months, um, and I'll I'll send you more information about that. But otherwise, does anyone have any last thoughts, questions? No. All right. Well, uh, I'll I'll see you all on email then, and then our next meeting is I think something like May sixteenth. So I'll send out an email about that too. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great night, everyone.